Greetings, my name is Lily Chang. It gives me such great pleasure to present to you Bilingual Chinese English Story Theater. I hope you will enjoy listening and watching. 大家好,我是刘丽荣,非常高兴有机会献给大家中文,英文,双语的儿童故事。希望大家喜欢. Thank you very much. 谢谢大家. Welcome to Romance of the Western Chamber, English Chinese version for children. English version by Howard Rubenstein. Translated into Mandarin by Li Rong Lily Chang. Illustrated by M.F. Shawaru. Edited by Judith S. Rubenstein. Published by Granite Hills Press. The reading in English is by Judith S. Rubenstein. The reading in Mandarin is by Li Rong Lily Chang. 欢迎大家收听西乡记, 儿童中英文版, 英文作者, 赫华德鲁宾斯坦, 总设计及翻译, 刘丽荣, 插图, M. F. 肖巴鲁, 编辑, 朱迪斯鲁宾斯坦, 出版商, 花岗岩山出版社。英语阅读，朱迪斯·鲁宾斯坦。中文阅读，刘丽荣。Once upon a time, when the Tang emperors ruled China, there was a poor young man orphaned from childhood by the name of Chang. He was handsome, intelligent, and industrious, and he wanted to improve his life. With only a knapsack, he left his hometown of Luoyang and set off for the capital, which was then called Chang'an, but today is called Xi'an. He wanted to take the emperor's examination, the highest in the land. Getting a good grade on that examination assured a high government position or a university professorship. Also, he was lonely and searching for love. 从前,在中国的唐朝时期, 有一位英俊聪慧的年轻人名字叫张生张生从小是孤儿生活贫苦他希望通过努力改变自己的人生赶考时节他背起行囊离开自己的故乡洛阳前往当时的首都长安今天的西安去参加全国最重要的科举考试如果考试通过成绩优秀他将谋得高官职位或者在锅子间获得教职内心孤独的张生也一直想寻找到自己的爱人。As Chang was passing through Ho Chung Prefecture, Walking along the banks of the Yellow River, he began to sing a song that showed his dreams. Sail to the sun, sail to the moon, sail to the sun and moon. I want to embark upon a raft and sail to the sun and moon. I'm searching for my love. I hope to find her soon. Then we can embark upon my raft and sail to the sun and moon. 
赶考路上，张生经过河中府，走在黄河岸边，不由吟诵了一首诗，代表达内心的梦想和渴望：驶向太阳，驶向月亮，驶向太阳和月亮。我要乘上浮叉，驶向太阳和月亮。我在寻找我的爱人，我希望尽快找到他。我们一起登上我的浮叉，驶向太阳和月亮。Chang suddenly saw in the distance a famous Buddhist monastery that had a reputation for helping students. By providing them with free room and board and access to its library, 继续往前走，张生发现了一座名为普救寺的古刹。在当时，寺庙是可以让赶考书生免费住宿、安心读书的极好安生之所。By chance. The superior monk of the monastery heard the youth singing and welcomed him warmly. 普救寺的方丈老和尚听到张生在吟唱诗文，非常热诚的欢迎他在庙里入住下来。Coincidentally. A beautiful young maiden by the name of Ying Ying Cui was strolling in the garden of the eastern pavilion of the monastery, accompanied by her servant Hong Yang. 碰巧的是，刚住下的张生，便在庙里遇到了一个美丽的女子。这个美丽的女子名叫崔莺莺。当时，崔莺莺正和丫鬟红娘一起在花园里散步。莺莺 was highly intelligent, an extraordinary poet, an excellent calligrapher, and quicker on the abacus than anyone else in the whole prefecture. But Yingying was very unhappy. Her father. Prime Minister Cui, who financed the monastery, had recently died, and just before he died, he had arranged for her to marry Lord Changhang, a rich man whom she did not like, let alone love. Cui Yingying, 聪明过人，不仅精于诗词书法。而且打的一手好算盘，他打算盘的速度几乎超越了当地的所有人。在此时的崔崔莺莺并不开心，因为他的父亲，当朝宰相崔相国，普救寺的追荐者，刚刚去世不久。更令他难受的是，父亲在去世之前，把他许配给了有钱有势的当朝尚书之子。郑恒，他并不喜欢郑恒，更不喜欢这门婚事。Ying Ying and Chang's eyes met, and it was love at first sight. Ying Ying 和张生擦肩而过，四目相对，一见钟情。The superior told Chang. That Ying Ying lived with her newly widowed mother in the eastern pavilion of the monastery, which was private. But there were chambers in the western pavilion, with an excellent view of the beautiful garden of the eastern pavilion. Chang requested such a chamber, and the superior gave him one. The Western Chamber of Our Story. Zhang Sheng 向方丈询问莺莺的情况。
，方丈告诉张生，英英和他刚丧偶的母亲一起住在寺院里私密的东厢房，现在寺院西厢房还有空房间，住在里面可以。一览东庭花园的美景，张生向方丈申请入住，进了西厢房。我们《西厢记》的故事由此而来。Whenever Ying Ying and Hung Yang were in the garden, Chang would compose and recite poetry from his western chamber window. And Ying Ying would do the same from the garden below. Zhang Sheng and Ying Ying's story begins like this. When Ying Ying and Hong Yang appear in the garden, Zhang Sheng will sit in the window of the garden to sing his own poems. Ying Ying is in the garden listening to the poetry. She will also sing the poems to the garden. The garden will also listen to the poems. One day. Ying Ying wrote a poem that Hung Yang delivered to Chang in the western chamber. It read, "When moonlight comes to the western chamber, and in the garden shadows fall, moving about the pavilion wall, then climb, my precious, climb." 有一天。英英专门写了一首诗，让红娘去送给了张生。诗是这样的：“拜月西厢下，迎风户半开。浮墙花影动，疑是玉人来。” Chang thought the poem meant. He should enter the garden that evening when the moon rises, and climb up to Ying Ying's balcony. And so he did. But when he got to the balcony, Ying Ying, to his surprise, became very angry, pretending he had misinterpreted her poem. Chang was puzzled. And so was the servant Hong Yang, both of whom knew that Chang had understood the poem perfectly well. Zhang Sheng 读完诗非常激动，他觉得英英是想邀请他月圆之夜在房间外的廊道与他相会。晚上，月亮升起的时候。他来到了英英房间外，然而出乎他意料的是，英英看到他后非常生气，指责他误会了自己诗的意思。张生满心疑惑，不知如何是好，最后只好失望的回到自己的西厢房。Hung Yang, although uneducated, was highly intelligent and understood Ying Ying's odd behavior. Ying Ying was ashamed of her invitation to Chang to visit her secretly and without her mother's permission, and she turned her shame into anger at Chang. Rebuffed by Ying Ying, Chang returned to the western chamber, greatly disappointed. Hong Yang 一开始也想不明白，他知道张生对英英所作诗的理解并没有错，但聪明的红娘很快理解了英英为何会有如此古怪的行为。英英对自己未经母亲允许私自邀请张生见面感到羞愧，他把自己的羞愧化作了对张生的怒气，他的心情其实也很复杂。
Soon after, the Buddhist monks held a memorial service for Prime Minister Tsui, Ying Ying's late father. Ying Ying and Chang attended the service, but they could not pay attention because they could only think of each other. 此后不久，庙里的僧人们为殷殷死去的父亲吹向国，举行法会。殷殷和张生都参加了，他们在法会上都无法静心诵经，因为两人心里一直都想着彼此。Suddenly and unexpectedly. The monastery is surrounded by a gang of bandits with its fierce and cruel leader, Flying Tiger. Flying Tiger wants to kidnap Ying Ying and marry her. And he threatens that if she is not delivered to him within three days, he will kill everyone in the monastery and burn it to the ground. 突然, 让人意想不到的情况发生, 赤院被一群土匪包围, 错号飞虎的土匪首领, 凶狠残忍, 想绑架殷殷, 并娶她为妻, 飞虎威胁说, 如果三天内, 不交出殷殷, 他就要把庙里, 所有的人杀光, 并, Everyone in the monastery is terrified. Ying Ying's mother, Lady Tsui, announces that anyone who comes up with a plan to rescue them can have her daughter Ying Ying for a bride. 情急之下, 英英的母亲崔夫人宣布, 任何人, 只要能想办法营救大家, Chang announces that he has such a plan. His best friend from early childhood has become the famous General Whitehorse. And he and his troops are currently guarding the mountain pass, not far from the monastery. Chang writes a letter to General Whitehorse about the grave situation at the monastery. 此时,张生站了起来,说自己有营救大家的办法,原来他从小一块长大的好朋友。现在是著名的白马将军。将军的军队目前正在守卫离寺院不远的关口。张生奋笔疾书写了一封求救信。A brave monk delivers Chang's letter to General Whitehorse. 一个勇敢的僧人把信送到白马将军手中. Upon reading the letter, General Whitehorse immediately leads his troops to the monastery. 将军看到信后立刻率领自己的士兵赶到普救室。General Whitehorse and Flying Tiger fight. General Whitehorse and his soldiers defeat the bandits. 打退了土匪, 杀死了飞虎. General Whitehorse slays Flying Tiger. The monastery and the lives of all its people are saved. Chang's plan worked. 僧人们和庙里的所有的人就此得救。张生兑现了营救大家的承诺。Lady Tsui immediately invites Chang to a meal at the Eastern Pavilion, 
Everyone is expecting a banquet, celebrating Chang's victorious plan and his engagement to Ying Ying. Instead, Lady Tsui hosts a modest supper and announces that she has to go back on her word. She explains, Ying Ying was already engaged to Lord Chang Heng when Lady Tsui promised to give Ying Ying as a bride to whoever comes up with a plan to save them. To solve the dilemma, Lady Tsui says she has a new plan. She will give Chang a fortune and then he will be eligible to marry a wealthy young woman other than Ying Ying. Yu Jing Wu Xian, Cui Fuen Ti Chu Yao Qing Zhang Sheng, Dao Dong Ge Lou Chi Fan, Ren Men Dou Zai Qi Dai Yi Chang Long Zhong De Qing Gong Yan, Qing Zhu Zhang Sheng Ying Jiu Ji Hua De Cheng Gong, Qing Zhu Ta Yu Ying Ying Ding Hun, Chu Ren Yi Liao De Shi, Wan Chan Fei Chang Jian Dan, Cui Fuen Xuan Bu, Zi Ji Bi Xu Shi Yan, 他解释说，当初答应可以把英英嫁给拯救他们的人的时候，只是临时起意。事实上，英英早已经与郑恒订婚。为了弥补张生，崔夫人提出，他会给张生一笔财产，张生可以另娶一个富有的年轻女子。Chang rejects her offer and leaves the supper in anger. Ying Ying is overwhelmed with sorrow. Hung Yang, the maid, sets a plan of her own in motion that she is certain will assure the engagement of Ying Ying and Chang. She arranges for them to meet in Chang's western chamber a boy and a girl alone, something unheard of during the Tang dynasty. Zhang Sheng very angry, rejected his invitation. Fu Xiu went. Ying Ying also was hurt by this. The smart Hong Yang understood Zhang Sheng and Ying Ying's situation. He came up with a plan. 可以让张生和英英结合的办法，他促成二人在英英的西厢房见面，并一起生活。在唐代，单身男女如此相处是惊世骇俗的。There, they could write poetry together, sing songs together, hold hands. And read books by the love light in their eyes. And when Lady Tsui hears about this, she will become furious. But she will have no choice other than letting the two lovers marry to spare the Tsui family a scandal. Just this way, Zhang Sheng and Ying Ying in the Xiang family. 一起写诗，一起吟唱，手握手捧书而读，彼此眼中满是爱的柔情。当崔夫人听说此事的时候，怒不可遏，但除了让这对恋人结婚之外，别无选择，因为她不想让外人议论嘲笑崔家的丑闻。Hong Yang's plan works. Lady Tsui does indeed become furious, and she agrees that there is nothing else to do but let the two lovers become engaged. However, she sets a strict condition. Chang must go to the capital, take the emperor's examination, Get a high score, 
and win a high position in government or a professorship in the university. Chang promises to do that and departs for the capital. Hong Yang's plan successfully. Chui Furen indeed is very angry, but he has no choice. He just has to let these two men be married. But he also makes a promise to Zhang Sheng that he must go to the capital to get the highest position. 后路，张生对此充满信心，承诺自己一定能做到，并选择立刻启程。Before he goes, he asks Hong Yang what she wants as a reward for her highly successful plan. She asks for nothing expensive, no jade. No gold jewelry, only a floral crown and a beautiful embroidered gown reaching to the ground. Ying Ying is very sad when Chang departs. 临走之前，为了报答红娘，他问红娘想要什么礼物。红娘说自己不要翡翠，不要珠宝，不要任何贵重的东西。只需要一顶花冠和一件漂亮的绣花落地长袍。张生的离开让英英非常伤心。Chang studies very hard at the capital, takes the examination and passes with honors, winning third place among hundreds of candidates. He wins a bronze medal for his achievement. The emperor appoints Chang governor of Ho Chung Prefecture, where the Buddhist monastery is located. Zhang Sheng in Jinchen studied very hard, finally he won a bronze medal through the test. In the many tests, he was ranked third and won the Emperor's Medal. 最终，皇帝任命张生为河中府尹，普救士即在他的管辖范围之内。Many young women are attracted to Chang, but he resists them all. The daughter of the chancellor of the university falls in love with him. And the chancellor approves and offers him a professorship, but Chang turns it down because he loves Ying Ying. Many young women express their love to Zhang Sheng. He refuses to give in. A daughter of the chancellor loves Chang. The chancellor wants to give the daughter to Chang and gives her a very good position. 张生也婉言拒绝了，因为他爱的是英英。Meanwhile, Lord Chang Heng appears at the monastery and demands to marry Ying Ying, to whom he is engaged. Hong Yang explains that is now impossible because Ying Ying is engaged to Chang, who saved their lives. Lord Cheng Heng says, a woman cannot be engaged to two men at the same time, and he demands to see Lady Tsui. Lady Tsui appears and explains the situation, hoping that Lord Cheng Heng will understand. But he does not. On the contrary, he tells a great lie. He says that Chang finished first on the examination and is already married to the chancellor's daughter. Lady Tsui says, "In that case, the wedding of Ying Ying and Lord Chang Heng may proceed at once." And she makes all preparations for a wedding. Zhang Sheng 还未到任，郑恒出现在普救室
要迎娶已经与他订婚的英英。红娘告诉他，与英英的婚事已经不可能，因为英英与救命恩人张生已经订婚。郑恒听后。非常恼火的表示，女子不能同时和两个男人订婚。他要见崔夫人，崔夫人出面并做了解释，希望他能够理解。但郑恒不仅不罢休，而且撒了一个弥天大谎。他说张生在电视中得了第一名，已经与尚书大臣的女儿结婚。崔夫人听信了谎言。决定让英英和郑恒马上结婚，并开始筹备二人的婚礼。Chang returns to the monastery triumphant, and is surprised to see that a wedding is in preparation for Yingying to Lord Changhang. Lady Tsui tells Chang she is disappointed he has married the Chancellor's daughter. Chang explains that there is no truth in that, and he has not married anyone. He expects to marry his one love, Ying Ying. Zhang Sheng 荣归故里，回到普救寺，却惊讶地发现英英正准备和。郑恒举行婚礼，崔夫人见到张生，非常生气，对他考取状元后引起了尚书女儿深感失望。张生解释说，郑恒撒了谎，这不是事实，他没有和任何人结婚，自己只盼妻英英为妻。And confronts him with the two different stories. She demands to know which is true. Furthermore, there is a rumor that Lord Changhang stole funds from the emperor's treasury, and the emperor wishes to question him about it. Lady Tsui also questions him about that. Saying her daughter cannot marry a thief, he refuses to answer, saying her questions are insulting, and consequently it is beneath his dignity to marry into the Tsui family. He promptly breaks his engagement to Ying Ying, and departs in anger. Tsui 夫人找来郑恒。对他两种不同的说法，善明真相。而且最近有传言，郑恒从皇帝的国库盗用资金，皇帝正想质问于他，崔夫人借机质问他此事，说自己的女儿不能嫁给小偷。郑恒拒绝回答崔夫人的问题，并说。夫人所问是对他的侮辱，和崔家结亲有损他的尊严，于是立即解除了与英英之前的婚约，并假称皇帝有召见，愤然离去。Chang keeping his promise gives Hong Yang a beautiful crown of flowers. And a long embroidered gown, reaching to the ground, which she wears at the wedding. Zhang Sheng 信守诺言，送给红娘一顶漂亮的花冠和一件垂到地上的绣花长袍。红娘头戴花冠，身穿美丽的长袍，参加了英英和张生的婚礼。The wedding of Ying Ying and Chang takes place. It is blessed by the emperor himself. General Whitehorse is best man, and he announces to everyone's delight that Chang's father had been a high official in the Tang government, 
and would have been wealthy, except that he was too honest and died too young. 这样，婚礼如期举行。新郎是张生，新娘是莺莺，二人得到了皇帝本人的祝福。婚礼上，白马将军是伴郎，他还告诉了大家一个惊喜：张生的父亲曾经是高官。原本会很富有，是因为过于诚实而意外去世。The story ends joyously with feasting, music, dancing, and performing acrobats. 故事在欢宴中，在音乐、舞蹈和杂技表演的喜悦欢腾中。结束。And Ying Ying and Chang live happily ever after. 从此，莺莺和张生幸福的生活在一起。The end. 完结。